Okay, let's begin with our warm up. So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead. Line up your ankles, knees, hips, and shoulders. Keep the crown reaching toward the ceiling and the bottom ribs toward your spine and then up toward your heart so that core gets activated to support your lower back. Sitting bones, shoulder blades toward the floor and just begin breathing, letting that belly move as the diaphragm pushes down, displacing organs, letting your lungs expand fully. And as you breathe, just draw your awareness inward and remember personal practice, focusing inward, noticing how your body is working today. And then inhaling, bring your arms to shoulder level and stretch it out. Exhale, hands to your chest, stretch to the front with your shoulders still down. And then exhale, hands behind you. Clasp your fingertips and lift your heart. Stretch your head back, coming into that upper body for a little bit of a back bend. And then pivot over as you exhale. Bend your knees a little if you need to. Or lift your sitting bones and stretch your hamstrings. Bring your hands toward your head and tuck in your chin. And just allow your body to get a little stretch through the back as you begin this practice. And then with your knees bent, lift your ribs up, sitting bones toward the floor, wind your spine back slowly to the top, and then into the upper body for the back bend. Shoulders down, hands toward the floor, and head stretching back. Take a breath, lift your heart. And then inhale upright, release your arms, Focus inward, feeling that circulation increasing. And again, inhale, reach it out. Exhale to your chest, stretch forward, shoulders down, and then hands coming behind you, clasping the opposite leg. So shift the fingers in one position. Press the hands down, lift your heart, and then pivot at your hips and come up. So deepen into your forward bend as much or as little as your body is needing today. And relax. Kind of move your head around. Release that neck. And then slowly again, wind your way to the top, into the upper body back bend. Shoulders relax. Stretch your spine. And then inhale up. Release your arms. And just take a moment again, focusing inward, noticing how things are moving and reacting to them. And for our lateral stretch, arms out, palms toward the ceiling, over your shoulders, clasp your hands, bring the arms back by your ears, and then sitting bones down, shoulder blades down, keep the body facing the front, and lean to the side. So as you lean to the side, press the foot you're leaning away from down for an extra stretch through those ribs. Breathe into it and relax. And then again, inhale back up. Switch your hands to the one in front. And again, bring the arms by your ears. Stretch out through your spine. Lean to the opposite side. No twisting, remember on this one, but push the foot down and out through the head and the hands to maximize that side stretch. And then inhale and come back upright and release. And again, just feel the shoulders, feel the upper body, feel the spine all through the ribs and relax. And we'll do our twists, so remember, base of the skull and base of the spine stretch away from each other to give you room to twist. Inhale, arms out, palms toward the ceiling and over your shoulders. Clasp your elbows, pull those arms back again by your ears. Sitting by the shoulder blades down, stretch up through the crown and twist. Keep your knees a little bent and the weight on both feet and stretch up as you breathe in. Exhale, coming over. So deepen into your forward bend as much or as little as you need from the twist. Just relax. 
Deep breathing. And of course, when you're ready, okay, stay in the twist as you come up and look toward the ceiling, lifting your heart, but being careful with your lower back while it's twisting. Elbows back, chest high. And then inhale up, exhale to the center, switch your arms around, bring your arms back again by your ears. Sitting on stand, stretch your head up, and exhale to the opposite side. Once more, lengthen up with the weight on both feet, all even. And exhale deeply as you come into that forward bend and just relax. Think about lifting your sitting bones, relaxing through the shoulders. And then slowly in the twist, work your way up. And again, heart high, elbows back, and not too much in that lower back. Keep the shoulder blades down and the chest high. And then inhale up, exhale around to the center. Arms up by your ears. Let's do our parallel to the floor motion. So sitting bones back, just pivot at the top of the thighs for that hip joint. Keep the arms by your ears. See if you can get it straight and stretched. And then just drop and go right back. Take a breath. Just relax. And then deepen if you'd like, pulling in a little bit more. Arms behind your legs. And then dropping your arms back to the front, tucking in your chin. Keep those knees bent as you again wind your way slowly back into mountain pose. So take a moment feeling your body, all that stimulation through the spine and torso. So I thought we'd do a little upper body work today. If you have a chair, let's start with the chair. Otherwise, you can go to the wall for this next one. We're going to first do a little chest opener, and then we're going to do a balance practice. So sitting on the front of your chair or with your hands in front of your shoulders, cut the wall. Just get ready for a little upper body back there. So if your hands are on the wall, just move them up a little bit higher and then step your feet back and push your hips back toward the center of the room so that your hips are over your ankles. If you're seated, hip bone, knee, ankle, toes, everything 90 degrees and you're allowing your body to still be stacked in that upright position. Bring your hands behind you if you're seated and pull your back against the back of the chair. Lift your heart, press the hands toward the floor. On the wall, just keep dropping your chest down. Keep the crown of your head reaching toward your hands and your hips reaching, sitting bones back toward whatever's behind you. Just deepen into that upper body, letting it maximize. If you're seated, tuck your chin toward your chest and release. If you're at the wall, just deepen a little bit more. So if you're seated, we're going to do our hands clasp the opposite way. So bring your hands behind, clasp the hands the other way, and again, pull back to the chair and lift your heart. Stretch your head back. Chin a little bit toward your chest. Remember, you don't want to crunch your neck too much. Same thing at the wall, head reaching toward your hands, not dipping your chin in or lifting too far up to look at the ceiling. Just cram up toward your hands. Just as sinking at the wall, just as lifting at the chair. And then again at the chair, chin toward your chest, release back to your seated position. Chin toward your chest at the wall, and take a little step forward and step back up into mountain pose. Turn your side to the wall where if you're seated, come up and turn the chair to the side if you want the chair for a little bit of extra support. So side of your foot parallel to the wall or the chair, can either on the chair or just next to the wall. And then sinking into that foot. Remember, base of the toes really need to get connected. So lift your toes, get the base all the way across, all toes centered into the mat. 
and the back of your heel inside and outside is equally touching that arch lifting the whole bottom of your foot touching down toes spreading out not gripping or you'll lose that base of the toe cut toes ankle knee hip shoulder everything lined up core active so ribs in and up you on the chair if you want it or next to the wall and then bring that other foot up a little or more or towards your heart now remember keep rolling in so that foot doesn't come across to your opposite leg and if you want you can clasp around it and pull it in a little closer or not and then whichever leg whichever height you're at just circle your ankle around both directions even if you're close to the foot with the ankle moving and then flex and point a few times and then release Feel that grounded connection through both feet and mountain pose. If you're using the chair, switch it to the other side. If you're at the wall, just turn around. And again, align that outside of your foot with the outside of your mat or the chair or the wall or whatever you're using for your guide. So a little inner rotation on the thigh. Keep those bones nicely stacked for support. When the bones support you, the muscles don't work as hard and it's much easier to maintain that now. Again, core active, ribs in and up so that you're supporting the spine. Hand on the chair or not, or next to the wall, your choice. Keep that crown reaching up as you bring your leg up on the other side. Again, a little inner rotation so that you're not knee out or in, but that foot is coming straight up. And again, sitting bones down, shoulder blades down, and clasp the knee in if you'd like to and circle your ankle whenever your leg wherever your leg is it doesn't matter how high it is so get the ankle working flex and point a few times and release once more into mountain pose if you're using your chair we're done with it today and you can just move that And then come into your mat, stretch and pivot over. And we'll come all the way to the mat into child's pose. So sinking back, hips on your heels, hands, palms up, forehead down. Remember, you can always use padding for your ankles for it to release any strain on your knees or thighs or under your forehead. So just breathe, relax. Let that lower back get a little stretch, so knees together, or breathe more easily with the knees apart. Your choice. And then we're going to bring the arms out in front, hands to the side of the mat, slide your toes back, knees back, and then hips to the floor and roll all the way down. And we're going to do a few cobras. So our first cobra is going to be our sphinx cobra. So bring your forehead to the mat. Relax through your hips, through your legs. Keep that hip width apart. They do nothing. And then pull your elbows in toward your ribs with your palms flat on the floor. So your elbows are close to your side. And then starting with your forehead on the mat, inhale and turn your face forward. Tuck your chin back in a little bit so your neck doesn't crunch too much and lift the crown. Chest forward and up so that heart is your focus. Keep pulling back with the elbows and in toward your ribs, toward your side. As you lift the chest forward and up, coming as high as you'd like into that upper body back then for your coat. If it's too much in your lower back, just lower. You don't have to go high. And remember, not a lot of pressure supporting you in the arms and hands. They're just helping position so that your shoulders stay loose. So breathe deep, lengthen up through the spine, and then exhale and pivot your forehead back down. Take a moment and relax. You can tuck your chin in and breathe. So we're going to do one more, and we're going to add a little something. So be prepared. So same thing, starting with your forehead on the mat, 
forearms on the floor, fingers spread, palms down, elbows in. Pull back toward your ribs and in toward your waist. Inhaling, face forward, crown up. Tuck your chin back a little bit. Don't stretch your neck too much or crunch your neck too much. Stretch it out. Crown to the ceiling, chest forward and up. So keep those shoulder blades going toward your waist. Now we are going to put pressure into our forearms this time. We're going to tuck the toes under and we're going to lift into forearm plank. So through the hips, through the navel, lift up. So you've tucked your toes under, so the base of the toes are down, and you're coming into a straighter position with your whole body as you can. Keep lifting through that core, through that navel and solar plexus. If you need to, bend a little at the hips, up a little higher, and then lower back down. Slide your toes back. Bring your hands under your shoulders and press all the way back into child's pose. Take a moment, just feel your body a little bit more. And then inhaling, sit up on your heels and we're going to come into staff position. So as you get your sitting bones connected, check your stacking of your upper body and positioning of your legs. So remember, maybe a little inner roll to keep those kneecaps and toes up toward the ceiling. Everything about hip width apart so that your bones are correctly positioned. So we're going to work the core in the boat position. So core activation at that solar plexus energy center means that you're going to bring the ribs toward your spine and up and get that core working, stabilizing. And then we're going to bring the knees, bend the knees straight up and draw the heels in toward your sitting bones till your feet can be flat, flat on the floor with the knees straight up toward the ceiling. Hands, palms up, slightly away from your sides of your legs so that your shoulders will stay released. Don't want to be hunching up through the shoulders. So keep the shoulder blades toward your waist as always. Sitting bones stay connected. So you don't want to roll back onto your sacrum as we do this. But you do want to go a little bit further back to engage that core just a little bit more. So feel that. If this is enough abs work, remember you can always stay here. You don't need to go further. Otherwise, we're going to first do one leg at a time. So bring one foot up. You can keep it just barely off the floor. You can bring it parallel with your shin toward the floor. Or you can straighten your knee and bring that leg out so that both thighs are parallel and spread your toes. As you're in that position, if that hip flexor starts going, oh, you know, that's really too much, you can lower your leg. The hip flexor won't have to work as hard but your abs will still be supporting you. So choose where you need to be for your body and just energize out through that bottom of the foot, wherever it is. And if it's way down toward the floor, maybe think about the knee being your energy focal point. So breathe out through the crown as well. Stretch it out, breathing. Oh, and if you're vibrating a lot, put your foot back down. Otherwise, one more time, just really stretch it and inhale up. Give yourself a little release through the core if you need to, or stay working it in that semi reclined position. But remember, always on your sitting bones, not your sacrum. So, of course, we're going to do that with the other foot. So, again, core act, ribs in and up. Shoulders and shoulder blades down, hands, palms up to keep them released through the shoulders, and the other foot comes up. It can come up just a little. That's working things also. Don't worry if that's where you are. It's a personal practice. Do what's right for your body. Choose your position. Spread your toes if you get everything where you need it to be. And focus on energizing out through the bottom of the foot and the head if you're fully extended. Or lower the leg if you're feeling like it's too much. Or bring that foot all the way back down. Always your choice. Personal practice. 
never overdoing it, just doing what's right for you. And then if your leg is still up, go ahead and bring it down. Stay there or sit up and take a little deep breath. Take a few breaths, just relax, because we're gonna do both legs together. It's gonna to be a little more intense. So don't go there if you don't want to. You can always just stay at the starting position or with the feet just barely moving off the floor. It's perfectly good. So again, knees are straight up, feet straight in front of you with the heels near that sitting bone area. Sitting bones stay on the floor, not your sacrum. Core is engaged, shoulders are released, hands palms up, and you're in that starting place. And when you're ready, bring your feet up a little or more or all the way out. And again, energize out through the base of the toes. If you want to hold your toes, it kind of releases those hip flexors a little bit to do less work. So you can feel more a little bit through the core if you want to do that. You know, so move your legs around a little if you need a little release through the hips. So your choice how you do it. You can just do it with your hands out or holding your toes or your legs can be lower or all the way near the floor. It doesn't matter. It's what your body requires. So choose your position and when you're ready, Bring your feet back down, slide your legs out, and just relax. So take a moment and breathe, feel your body. And then we're going to come back up on our knees. So take a moment, just releasing and relaxing, kind of through the hips, through the legs, and breathe. And then again, we're going to bring the hands to the sides of the mat, the feet back, the hips down, the roll all the way to the mat. Forehead on the floor, hands alongside your side. Just relax through the hips and leg. And remember, this is a cobra we're going to do again, a little upper body variation. So just let your lower body relax. Hips down, sitting bones toward your heels, and relax that lower body. And then bring your arms along the floor in front of you, right in front of your shoulders, palms down, arms extended. And then bring the fingertips into the heel of your palm and bring the hands back closer to your body with the elbows bending, going out toward the sides of your neck, out to the sides of your body. And then forehead starts on the floor, lower body totally relaxed. And from the floor, inhale, Face to the front, crown to the ceiling. Tuck your chin back toward you. And then focus on the heart, bring the heart forward and up. So as you do that, shoulder blades are toward your waist and you're in that upper body for your back. So this is the neck and shoulder area for the cobra. The further away your hands are from your body, the higher up your spine, that contraction maximizes. So, just notice where it is. Just forward and up, crown up, chin in a little bit so that back of the neck isn't crunching too much. And then on an exhalation, bring your body slowly back down. When the forehead touches, just release through the shoulders, through the neck. And then again, bring the fingertips in toward the heel of your palm and the hand back closer toward your head. And you're still hands above your head, not quite to the top of your head. The elbows bend further out to the sides. Don't try to keep them in. Palms flat, forehead on the floor. And as you inhale again, crown to the ceiling. Tuck the chin back in, chest forward and up. And again, coming a little bit higher into that cobra. Your ribs are still on the floor. They don't have to come. You don't ever need to go into that lower back in your cobra. So with the hands slightly higher than your head, you should be in that shoulder, upper, upper shoulder area right around the heart. So take a moment and lift the heart maybe a little higher. Feel across the upper part of your shoulder blades in that contraction. And then on an exhalation, slowly bring your body back. Forehead to the mat, 
relaxing through the neck, through the shoulders, through the body. And again, fingertips in and hands back a little bit more. So maybe right about your temple area of your, of your head, hands right in front of your shoulders, elbows way out further than your shoulders, and forehead on the floor. Inhale, face forward, crown towards the ceiling. Chin tucking back in, stretching the back of your neck. Focus on the heart, forward and up. And again, not a lot of pressure in the hands, just using them for positioning so that you focus that major contraction through the lower part, maybe, of the shoulder blade system. So just notice where it is on your heart. Chest forward and up, crown toward the ceiling. Those ribs are still on the floor, no need to go any higher. Take a breath, maximize or not, your choice. And then as you exhale, pivot back down. As your forehead touches again, just relax through the shoulders, through the neck. Now this time, it's yogini choice. So you can keep your hands where they are and do that kind of middle back. You can move them a little higher and do that heart area, upper mid back. Or you can bring them further out for that neck and shoulder contraction. So make your choice. Remember, if you choose one and you go up and you say, oh, that wasn't where I wanted it, just exhale forehead back to the floor and move it either further out for higher up or closer to your body for further back. So find your position for your hands, elbows bent out to the side, relax through the lower body. And inhale, face forward, crown up, tuck that chin back toward your chest, and chest forward and up, maximizing through that heart center, coming into your upper body cobra, wherever you want to be. So breathe and lengthen through your spine. And then when you're ready, exhale back in. And this time, bring your hands under your shoulders, push back and into child's pose for a nice little stretch all along your spine in a forward bend. So relax in the forward bend as much as you want, letting especially that upper body get a good stretch for you. And then bring your hands back out in front to the sides of the mat, pivot up and drop your hips back, come all the way back down onto your foot. So again, relax through the hips, through the legs, forehead to the floor. And we're going to bring the hands in your choice of position. So you can be in an extended position, you can be in the forearms to the floor position, or you can have your hands closer to your shoulders and we're going to go up into a cobra. So forehead starts on the floor wherever you are. Inhaling, face forward, tuck the, chin, tuck the chin back in, crown toward the ceiling, heart center forward and up. Press into your hands maybe a little bit to come up and stabilize wherever you are in your cobra. So it can be high, it can be low, it can be wherever you want to be. And we're going into a twist. So lengthen through your spine up through the crown and then turn your whole body to one side and look towards your feet. So remember, you want that hip area, rib area, and shoulder area, as well as your head turning to look to the side or a little bit further back. And then exhale, returning to the center and release that forehead to the neck. So of course, we're, of course we're going to twist to the other side. So if you want to keep your hands where they are, that's fine. If you want to move them somewhere else, that's okay too. So choose your hand position. Keep your elbows bent either. If you're on your forearms, elbows into your side. If you're in an extended position, elbows out toward the side. Hips relax, lower body releases, hands planted, inhaling, face forward, crown up, chin tucking back in, shoulders and shoulder blades towards your waist, 
heart forward and up. Crown toward the ceiling, deepen into that stretch before you move into your twist. And again, hips, ribs, shoulder, everything turning to the side for your cobra twist. Take a breath, deepen as much or as little as you want. And then lengthening your spine, exhaling, turn back to the center. Lengthen one more time and exhale all the way. Feel that twist energy and you can roll over into corpse position or you can go back into child's pose for our relaxation. So find your position and relax. So let your spine stretch long. Let your belly just move with the breath in and out, letting that diaphragm freely move. Expand your lungs completely. Exhale any tension. Breathe deep. As you exhale, just allow your body to grow heavier, sink deeper into that earth's surface beneath. If you've been in child's pose and you want to release into some other position, feel free to do that for your relaxation. So deepening the breath, relaxing your body. We did quite a bit of spine work, abs work today. So kind of focus on that torso and let it release. Deep breaths in. Exhaling, letting your body just sink deeper into the earth and place. As your body relaxes, just allow thoughts of your body to release from your awareness. As you breathe deep and release the thoughts of your body, know that other thoughts will come to your mind. It's the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts. It's your choice if you pay attention. At this moment, there's no need to remember the past, no need to anticipate the future. Just be with your breath in the moment, relaxing completely, sinking into that earth embrace, allowing your thoughts to drift away unneeded, unnoticed. And as you breathe more deeply and sink further into the earth and ice, just let your mind release all content of the thoughts, deepening into that inner awareness of peace. Let the peace grow in your body, filling your mind, just in peace. And as always, if you want to keep relaxing, feel free to do that. Otherwise, we can draw an energy and awareness back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And with each breath, just begin moving your body gently, stretching it however feels right for you. Pressing your back down, or lifting your ribs up, a little bit more stretch through the midsection. And when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, 
Sitting bones toward your heels, back toward the floor, toward the floor, and pull your knees in toward your heart. And again, wrap your arms around and let your body know you appreciate its yoga work and the work it does for you every day. And when you've had enough hug and appreciation, keep your knees rolling over to the side, sitting back up, and getting ready for whatever's ahead the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me this morning.